welcome back. And thank you guys so much for joining us again. I have Brian Sullivan here with me. And we've been having some great conversation about what's going on in Frontier. But now we are going to get into a little bit of what is going on in District 6. Something that I know that uh, we both agree on and have been involved in is, you know, the complaints against some of the books in the schools. And I think, you know, what you talked about with what you experienced in Frontier with the namesake, that's, that's definitely kind of par for the course. There was the book, The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, and it had such a great message. There was times I was like, yes, yes. And then they would put something weird in there, and I'd be like, no, <laughs> what? Um, but this kid, he's Native American, and he lives on a reservation, but he is too smart for what the reservation school is going to teach him. And so a teacher gets him to go to a school off the reservation. It's a white school. And he starts to, like, learn all these things. Like, I'm not identified based off of the fact that I live on a reservation. In fact, I'm a part of many different tribes. So he talked about the reservation tribe, the tribe of the white school. He plays basketball. He's a nerd. He loves to draw. He's a cartoonist. And he's also the tribe of the chronic masturbators. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. What literary wow. value did that have? Right. You know, I mean, like. You had such a great message going, trying to tell kids that they are not boxed in by where they were born, where they live, how they're raised. The sky is the limit. They, they, they have so many different components to them. But then oh, we have to make it sexual. Why do we have to make it sexual? Um, right. Is there really that many kids that are going, man, I'm a chronic masturbator. And I just really wish there was a group. I mean, who's sitting there going, um, yes, that's me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's desensitizing. It's normalizing. It's planting that seed. Yep. It's opening the door. This was in my complaint at the, at the board meeting. And in fact, there was officers there, obviously you are aware of the police officer presence that we have to have. And I talk, I always talk with them and they told me, you are exactly correct. This is a seed that can be planted by groomers because then if a teacher gives a student this book to read and then they get to that part and they say, well, you know what masturbation is, right? Well, it feels good, doesn't it? Oh, well, are you doing it correctly? Well, let me show you. Let me help you. And now we have a whole other situation on our hands unnecessarily because of a stupid book. That doesn't make any sense. No, I agree. Whatever happened just to the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic, science, you know, what have you. It's derailed itself, I should say, the teachers union and our great politicians have derailed our education system into a debauchery, into this dumpster fire of immorality. Yep. And our whole society starts with our kids. Yes. I used to think it, you know, well, if we just get this president elected or we get this senator elected, it, you're kind of starting at the wrong end because... Our education system, it educates our kids. It, those kids move on to college. Those kids move on to doctors, lawyers, politicians, the people that make America. That's where you start. That's where the left started 60 yeah. years ago. Have you seen the documentary, Whose Children Are They? I watched a little bit, but not much. They, they talk about that, and I can't remember who it is, which Chinese president said it, but it was, you know, you can never invade mainland America because behind every blade of grass is a gun, right? Oh, right. There's that whole concept. And, but, and, and they realized that, and they realized that the adults were going to stand their ground, but if they could yep. just get into those kids, just plant those seeds, and they do it all under the guise of anti-bullying and inclusion and, yep. and all of that crap. Yep. Well, nobody wants to be called a bigot. Nobody yep. wants to be called homophobic or transphobic. I don't hate gay or trans people that's no. weird that that's a, that is a weird approach to take what i do hate though is telling our kids that you must sacrifice yourself to make them feel comfortable because they're different well wait a minute in order to make one person feel comfortable we might be making other kids feel uncomfortable you know we talk about 
you should love yourself the way you are, but yet you think you're trans, please go ahead, take hormones, do whatever you can to feel better about yourself. Well, wait a minute. We have been teaching them the concept of, you know, loving themselves. And, and then there's the whole anti-bullying um, curriculum that basically is just reverse racism. Yep. Um, that's what it's all based off of. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the equity picture and it's a, I don't know, like three or four kids and they're standing outside of like a soccer game. And there's one kid who's tall enough and he can see over the fence. But then there's a girl who's handicapped and then there's, you know, another child who's just not tall enough. And they're like saying, you know, we need to give the handicapped kid and the girl that's not tall enough um, opportunity to see the game. Well, first of all, buy tickets to the game. Right. They have handicapped seating inside of the stadium specifically so that handicapped people can see without being obstructed. Because of their handicap. Right. Um, also, like, we're trying to take away other people's opportunities to allow other people to, you know, have that same experience. But, of course, the kid that was tall enough to see over the fence, he was white. Mm. And the other kids were, you know, different race. And it's pushing that ideology that um, other races are not as lucky or as privileged as white people. And it, um I know when I ran for our school board in District 6, this was something that <laughs> it's really funny. They would get, the other candidates would in, inspect, specifically one would, <laughs> every time I would say it, I'm a mama mixed children. If you guys are going to, you know, brag on this and stuff, but my children are going to get the opportunities that they've earned, that they've worked for, and do not give them an opportunity only because you feel sorry for them. You are now saying that you don't think they're capable of obtaining that qualification without your help. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, I agree. And it all kind of I it kind of goes back to uh District 6's initiative 2030 uh that they want to hire uh an equal amount of uh of race to they call them people of color people yeah people of color to teach in their schools uh, equal to the amount of kids they have which is i believe 65 percent of Greeley is, is hispanic and that's all well and good if you you have 65 percent of hispanics or black people that that meet that criteria to teach your children to to get them to the next level by all means do it yeah but please don't cheat my kids or somebody else's kids out of a good education just because you want to meet a hiring quota. My question for that uh, always is, does that mean you were intentionally not hiring Hispanic or black people to then now have to specifically call out that you are going to hire them? Like, that's that's so weird to me in the first place, yeah. just that recently... The mayor had made a comment that our parks are equitable. Well, was there once a time that they weren't? Were you standing outside telling kids they couldn't come play? Really? I never saw any signs that said no black people or brown people can uh, go into this park. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I, I find it really disgusting that uh, some of the board members, not all of them, but some of the board members are actually actually backing this initiative 2030 and they actually in essence are saying yeah we're going to teach your kids out of out of an education yeah. by by a, a a teacher that has those qualifications the parents should be absolutely just madder than hell that these elected school board members are going to cheat your kids out of Potentially, I should say, potentially cheat your kids out of an education by by hiring on on the specific race. Yep. I, I mean, that's racism, isn't it? If you're hiring specifically out of a race, it doesn't matter if it's black, white, or, or Mexican. Well, and I mean, let's talk about this. So the population is 65% Hispanic. Why are we not working on 
giving these children a quality education, inspiring them, having faith in them, not just passing them along because that's what is expected of you, helping motivate them to want to then turn around and become a teacher themselves. Right. Also, I think that part of the issue that there is such a teacher shortage is these students have seen the way that these kids act in the classroom and that the teacher can't do a thing about it. And they're like, screw it. We ain't doing that. That's insane. I'm not putting myself in that situation. Right. Why would somebody want to be a teacher? Right. It doesn't it doesn't look like it pays to deal with with the crap and, and, and you know, you have to put a smile on your face and everything is fine. District six is the best. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's perfect. I love it here. <laughs> well DEI is going to be the death of the school system. Uh you, you don't you don't teach a child that you you get it on your own merit. You're teaching them. You get it because of your race, creed, color, religious background, what have you. You're not doing it on what you know. Uh, it, it's just like the Martin Luther King quote that someday I wish my kids would be judged on the content of their character, not on the color of their skin. Uh, Do you huge. think that they're doing something by being like, oh, because of the color of your skin, you should get this when I, that's. That is blatantly going against what he is saying. Yep. Because he's saying he doesn't want his kids to be withheld because, but he also do, doesn't want them to be included because right. of the color of their skin. Yeah, it, it's sad. It's got to be kind of a tough situation to sit back and watch what's going on in the school board with the DEI and stuff. I also think that it's ironic that we're so against bullying, but yet we have a board of seven adults plus a superintendent and plus five assistant superintendents that do that on a regular basis. Yep. They bully the parents. They bully the teachers. They bully the other board members. Yep. It, it's absolutely insane. And it's all because they just want to continue to pretend like the boat's not sinking. <laughs> There's not holes everywhere. One of the school board candidates felt like she should be elected only because of the color, the color of her skin. That doesn't make any sense to me. I had somebody ask me, well, you're from a presumable European descent. I'm like, that's insane. How do you think that you can advocate for the diversity of this district? Well, my two mixed children were sitting behind me. I pointed at them. I said, you see them? I think I'm doing a pretty good job at trying to help them understand all of their heritage. I want them to understand their German. I want them to understand their Native American. I want them to understand their Irish. I want them to understand they're black. I want them to understand they're Mexican. I want them to understand it all. Yep. Why are we just focusing on the Mexican and the black? That doesn't make any sense. 